I was speaking on prodigy. It was just like I had looked into uh, who he was as the person and like listening to it, like his story. His book was really good. Like it was fourteen hours long, fifteen hours long. Not that I listened to that shit within like a day or two. Um, I don't want to start speaking, but um, to get back to what I was saying though, but with um, Prodigy, he he actually was aware and very conscious at a young age, and he grew up in the same projects as, you know, um, Nas a couple other people. That's the main person that everybody would know. Even if you were very young, you pretty sure you have an idea or know who Nas is. Like you feel me? Um or you knew all these other rappers that you feel me? He's from New York, he's from Queens Queens. He was born in Long Island, but he they really got famous in Queens. I mean he started hanging around in Queensbridge, you feel me? But with that death, um they made it seem like he choked on the egg and that his sickle cell was triggering that day that he passed, but that wasn't necessarily um, the case. He was sacrificed, you feel me, by his mans that he grew up with, um, that he actually started Mob Deep with. Um, as I was doing the Gematria, I'll, I'll end up dropping the code in, in the the chat, I already have all the shit laid out. I was still going through some more stuff that I need to put in there. I have videos and stuff. Um, even like the guy that he rapped with, Havoc, he talked about his death and he said that, you know, that he heard a rumor that he passed and um, he was like, how when I just basically like talk to his manager or whatever, his role man is laughing, he, he and Chicken Palmer's arm, but it says, an article that he died from choking on the egg. So you feel me? Even the gematria on egg was tied into, um, like I think it was his name. Um, a lot of his music, his his rap name, his real name. Like you feel me? Yeah, quote unquote choked on the egg. Like you feel me? But. When Havoc was on, he was on Matt Hoffer, uh, Matt Hoffer um, show or whatever. He was doing an interview. He clearly said that his real manager gave him chicken parmesan. But it's like, for that to be in 2017 and you remember or something like that, and even him acknowledging that, you know, that there are conspiracies and he know that there is uh uh, Illuminati and he resonates with 50% of that it's like a lot of the numbers that was in Prodigy's death ties into Havoc you feel me um, as well as even in that interview he said that he feels like he's watching over him and ever since he's been gone that things been going up you feel me so it's like in a sense, you just kind of admitted that it's a sacrifice, but it's like, bro, like, I thought they was cool the whole time. When the whole, he really don't mess with him. Like, he real life don't mess with that nigga. Like, P do not mess with him. Tyre G does not mess with him. And I found out that um, while Prodigy was, was locked up when he first came home, um, Havoc went on Instagram and tried to say that Prodigy was the G word. I, don't, I already said it earlier, but I don't know how you, you know, it's TOS shit, but you feel me? He tried to say why he was in jail, niggas was, you feel me, doing some AO shit to him. Like, but it's like, at that time, that's what the man you've been rapping with so long. You go on Twitter to do that and then try to lie and say that. Your Twitter, your Twitter was hacked, and then all of a sudden, 2013, y'all good. Like, how do you you say that you let your emotions get the best of you, 
and try to take it back, but it's like you still trying to stand on what you're saying at the same time. So it's like kind of weird shit is going on. Like, and even in his book, he even said it. Like, I should have wow, should have read. He even said that like as many times that they had their own problems, like he always looked at it as for the fans or you know, it's a mob deep, but we all know that it was them uh, like the business shit. Like niggas know that's how they gonna get their bread. They're not trying to go back to the street selling no crack and all this other wild shit. Like so plus whatever they got personal, they gonna put that aside so they can continue to let their business run, you feel me? But then even then it was like when Parji had the the idea of just them actually being able to be free from a record company now and he wants to go um independent and you know he know how the process works and how he wanted to run it but it was just like i know i can do it but it's like if my partner is not along with me like it's not it's not gonna work at all you know what i mean so he just constantly like continues to just, just forget. I don't want to say forget how he felt, but he kind of like overrided how he felt to, you know, keep him and his partner happy as well as like they team together so they could continue to do great things. You feel me? People do a lot. Yes, uh, people do a lot for fame and not realizing that. It's like you selling yourself out just for for some money, not as well as just selling yourself out. You eventually have to sell your your, your friends out, your family, like, and then eventually, if you want to rebel, or even you know, once they just feel like they done with you, like, they could they got all your masters, you feel me? They got mad records out of you. So as soon as you die, you just blow up and they making way more bank off of you than when you were actually alive. And they still have masters, they still have your songs. So they still have the rights to drop another album if they really wanted to. And we already know these rappers don't have just a couple of songs. They be working in the studio all these times. So it's like, they got all this, this music, this money right here. Um, a lot of their families don't even be getting that money. Mm-hmm. So. It's just crazy, like, and it's just a game that's being played that people constantly fall into because we are just hypnotized by money. And I was like, just this whole week, I've just been watching nothing but just documentaries with a lot of artists that pass. Um, and it's just like a lot of these stories is the same. Like, I even watched the Biggie documentary just off the simple fact that I grew up in Best Eye and a lot of these areas that they're speaking about and they're talking about. I really grew up on these blocks or even simply just walked around. You know what I mean? So it's like, even with that, like before he really got in his deal or whatever, Sunday, but um, take a day, which would be today, like the best day to really just regenerate yourself, relax. We always take Sundays like as a chill day. So, you know, take this day to be selfish, do what you want to do. If you feel like you're tired and you don't want to go anywhere and you just want to sleep and do that. Don't feel bad for it either. Like, you can um, take you a bath, take you a nice spiritual bath, get you some Epsom salt. Um, if you got some herbs, Shawnee sells some as well, as well as some protection oils that I use myself. You can me. Yeah. And then stay have a uh, positive. You know, if anybody else got anything they want to talk about it, ask you me. Don't be afraid to drop it. We are here to learn. And if I don't know, I will let you know. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's how I used to be with me too. But 
like I said, you got to find what just will make you happy and how you can do it to be able to just relax yourself and shit. Shit. Fuck around. I started uh, finding interest in, in like, coloring. Stick you a fucking coloring book and just start coloring, bro. Yeah. I actually got to be an iPad now, so I'm going to look into uh, buying an Apple Pen so I can start drawing this shit and start designing stuff again. So instead of me always drawing on the paper and the to thing it, I could just do it straight from my iPad. You know what I mean? But even if it's just, just watching TV, like, I used to have a hard time with watching TV. I still do. Like, I'd be hard on myself about it because it's not really my thing anymore. Like, I'm not on YouTube. I'm, I mean, yeah, I, yeah, get into it. And just continue to hone into what you want to do, what you have interest in. You feel like you see yourself doing it and it catches your eye, just do it. It's like, niggas is young. Even if you're not young, we still have time to be here. So it's like, why not give yourself time to find something that's a hobby or something that you feel like it can be a hobby and then it could eventually create you some money in some type of way. Like, even if you start fucking with the digital arts, you start selling that shit. You can be putting it on posters and different shit. Like, there's many ways you can go about different things. Like, even with my photos, like, I want to start selling my photos on, like, posters. Like, see, people start fucking with, like, if you fuck with the photo, I'm pretty sure, like, niggas would see some shit like that in their apartment, like, you know? Yeah. So, basically, like, Gematria is how... You will code, num- like, basically, like, messages with numbers. Are you feel me? So, A would be 1, B would be 2, C would be 3, like, you feel me? And then just down the alphabet. And then after that, um, when you add the words together, they equal a certain, like, you know, number. And usually they use those phrases and sentences in these news articles to code their message for the people that actually knows about it as far as like within their society. Um, Like when I say like, be careful how you are consuming a lot of things in the news as well as that you see on social media, TV, and I, well, I said the news, but you feel me? Just things that just pop up just to distract you, as well as like even with the killings, um, mass shootings, the way certain people die, like they have so much power where they can make a simple death look like it's a simple death, but it's really a whole like sacrifice to it, you feel me? Um, but with Prodigy, 